Hello my friends and welcome to the beginner account for the educational MK Mobile video. This videos usually don't get that much views, so I really appreciate you clicking into it. And if you leave a like and click the subscribe button, it's gonna be tremendous. Let's get right into it. So we're gonna talk about Shao Kahn's tower. I I changed my mind about Shao Kahn Tower. I always thought it's like it's nice to complete it once because you get those talent points. Uh, first of all, let's talk about what Shao Kahn Tower is. Let's treat this video as a tutorial from the very new players to maybe intermediate players who are still maybe not diving into Shao Kahn's Tower as much, which was me. I honestly delayed playing Shao Kahn Tower for so long, but recently I've been grinding it because I wanted to complete it. Uh, so Shao Kahn Tower is not that difficult. You can probably beat this tower after maybe one or two months of playing. Like the top team is just off balance battle with three fusion seven diamond cards. It, it seems like it's difficult. But honestly, they don't even have any gear, and as we know, the gear in this game, uh, that's what makes battles different. Gears and modifiers. Rarely characters. At least none of these characters are extremely dangerous and all have easy counters. Anyway, so only the first completion of the tower gives you uh, talent points. However, and souls. I'm pretty sure you don't get souls from a second completion. Maybe you do. Actually, that's going to be learning experience for me too, because I don't think I've ever played the tower after I completed it. And it's been such a long time ago, I don't even remember. Anyway, the point is, getting 100 talent points is extremely important. As you see, my talent tree, like, after I changed my talent tree recently, I had so much success so much more success in the Sorcery Tower, and uh, I changed my views on the good talent tree setup for the beginner players. In my opinion, talent tree should be set up in a way that benefits you fighting in the towers the most, because it's the most challenging mode, and some people change, reset their talent tree depending on what, what they're doing. Like if you're grinding Faction Wars, you change your talent tree. If you're grinding Tower, you change your talent tree. I think it's too much work. I think it's not worth it. I think you should just set up your talent tree once and then maybe just tweak it if you are stuck in some really powerful battle in the tower. Sometimes some battles would require you to change talent tree as a last resort. But other than that, I don't see the point in, in uh, resetting your talent tree all the time. So I'm gonna first uh, do a few things and then I'm gonna show you my my version of the best talent tree for beginners for beating the towers. If you're not interested in playing the towers, this is not gonna be a good setup for you. But in my opinion, if you're good at... Yeah, like, the towers is the best game mode for you. It's the game mode where you're gonna be stuck the most. So maximizing your uh, efficiency in towers is much more important than uh, just generally doing better in other game modes because you can do that by just getting better characters. Uh, like there is no game mode that is more challenging than towers. That's why it's very important. Anyway, so here let's see what I'm gonna go for. Ten uh, special one damage boost, critical. Oh, this is the one I actually wanted to spend. This is the one that is extremely important. Critical hit chance boost. I'm gonna max this boy out. This is what I've been spending all my tokens on. And uh, I have two talent points and we're gonna get one more in the end of this video from beating battle 100 and I'm gonna show you my final uh, version of the talent tree. Which I think is the best for being efficient in the towers. Uh, Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna just stick to the same team. I'm just gonna... No, actually, I'm gonna go for my team one. But I do want to have Reptile in it, so I'm just gonna replace uh, Silver Kenshi with my Diamond Reptile. My Fusion 2 Diamond Reptile. My boy is all grown up. He has... Uh, I mean, he has Tower Gear, but it doesn't matter. It, I think this battle is gonna be pretty easy with my Johnny.
which is going to be killing them one by one, and Reptile is going to be doing some additional damage with putting poisons on. This should not be difficult at all. Let's go. Let's let, let's get into it. Let's snare Scorpion. Now, weak point attacks, in my opinion, is extremely important for beginners because having snare on special one on such characters as uh, look at that, he's melting him. On such characters as Hellspawn uh, or as Johnny Cage, Kenshi, you're gonna be having snare on their special ones, which is extremely powerful. Obviously, Bone Shield and Revenant won me so many battles. Like it's it's purely luck based, but it's like it's still uh, like when everything aligns, this can give you an edge to beat the battle you couldn't beat before. So Revenant, Bone Shield, weak point attacks are three of the most important things, and honestly. When you don't have really powerful gear, maxing out critical hit chance is can be a game changer because like for example my Johnny Cage when he crits on his special one he does like at least double damage from what he does when he is not critting. So it's extremely important to be able to crit. And you can get free what is it? 5 3 uh 17 critical look at that. His hits are critical, and he just did critical special one. It's so much free damage. It's just when you don't have enough gear to get yourself to a decent critical hit chance. Having that note, I never went for a fence tree before, and maybe this is not going to be the most efficient tree for players who have, for example, maxed tower gear and can get themselves super high critical hit chance without any problem. So if you have really powerful gear, maybe it's not the way for you. But again, this is the tutorial for from like new players to maybe intermediate players. When you are close to maxing out you like maxing out your rare gear, that's where I think this is a really good setup from the very start to like mid game. All right, and we're back to Tower One, and you still get souls and coins, but I don't think uh, I don't think you get Shao Kahn relics. Or do you? Wait, let me let me beat this battle real quick. I need to make sure. Do we get Shao Kahn relics from the second run or not? Fight. Also with talent tree, it's it's very important to like a lot of people didn't realize that you can actually uh, you don't actually have to max out the node in order to move to the next node, which is which can allow you to reach well higher nodes in more, uh, like, h more h more of the higher nodes. Okay, we got five of this, and let's see if we get Shao Kahn relics from the second battle. Sorry, I'm scrambling around back and forth. That would be cool if I could farm Shao Kahn relics from this, because Relic Khan is very difficult. Yeah, you do! Wow, you still get Shao Kahn relics, so I think you're gonna get, like, 50 of those... Plus a lot from battle 100, probably like 70. You can get around 70 relics from each run. Which means, uh, and each run takes around a month. Let's just say months and a week. So you can be farming 70 uh, Shao Kahn relics in a month. Let's say, the worst case, 50 a month. And it requires uh, thir around 1300 to max out Shao Kahn. So if you never play Relic Hunt, you should be able to max out Shao Kahn in two years, which sounds like a lot, but if you play Relic Hunt plus this tower, plus you get some free souls once in a while, I don't see why not. It's three battles, and once you beat it once, it's just, it's not gonna be a problem at all. Anyway, let's go to the talent tree and finish the setup. I've been thinking about this setup for a long time. So now I have three points. I can't go any further. Also, see, I have three nodes that have only one point into it. Because I wanted to make sure I have enough points to reach the specific node. And this is the smartest thing you can do. Do not max out first nodes. Because they're usually better nodes further into the tree. So make sure you select the path. Still, you pick the nodes that you actually want. But don't put too much into them, because there is definitely better notes. Now, I'm not sure about increased combo ender chance. Uh, I don't want to max it out, because I feel like like combo enders give chance for your enemy to regroup. I still went for it in this tree, 
because uh, the rest of the things are not that useful. So I have now three points. Let me show you my defense tree. This is my defense tree. I went all in in Revenant and in, in, in Shinnok's teachings because those are the most important. And on support tree, I put one node into each and I went all in in weak point attacks. Now, you can basically put these three points in whatever you think you, is going to be the most useful for you. Um, stun applies shield break. Since you, you, I use a lot of Johnny Cage, which can stun when they're about to take out. And I also use a lot of Hanzo Hasashi. Now, you, you need to think, like, which characters are the most powerful for you. Also, you need to keep, uh, keep in mind that certain nodes are more beneficial to have at level 1 than at level 5. For example, let's take a look at this one. When you only have one point in it, it gives you 10% chance. And one extra point will add 5% chance. So first point gave you entire 10%, but second point will only give you five additional 5%. Now let's take a look at teamwork. You start with 2% and the next point gives you 4%, which means it's equal. Each point will give you equal value. It's not diminishing with each next node, which makes this node much more efficient. And if it's something that you considering that you might want to go for, Maybe it's a better deal to spend your to tokens into it. For example, in Focused, again, it doubles. So it, you can see that each point is going to be having... Why did I went for Focused? I have no idea. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Focused is not very useful. I mean, it was useful in Sorcery Tower. There was a lot of Resurrection characters. And I don't use Special 3s nearly ever, so I guess it's not the terrible thing. Again, this one also doubles. There is a lot of notes that are like this, but there are also notes that uh, gives you very little in terms of like uh, second point. Like for example, this one. B first point gave you 12% less damage from special attacks, but each next point will only give you additional 2%. You can clearly see that it's not worth investing anything more than just one point into this. And now that I thought about it, I kind of want to do go for damage. Because, again, since we're doing the tower setup, I want to be able to do as much damage as possible. To kill the enemies before they can trigger all the crazy effects to save them. So maybe I'm going to go for basic attack damage boost. It's not much. But I can get extra 2%. Or should I go for this? For critical damage. Again, one point gave me 10% and each additional one is gonna give me only 3%. But 3% is better than 1%? <laughs> but I'm not gonna be critting all the time, so... This is hard. This is really hard choice. Oh god. You know what? I'm gonna go for teamwork. Power is very important. It can be, again, difference between life and death. I'm going for teamwork. Even though it was nerfed recently, it's still, it, it's still decent. So I managed to get it all the way to 4. So yeah, this is my final suggestion for the talent tree. If you want to copy it, uh, if you think you have uh, pretty much the same teams as I do and do simil have similar goals for your account, if you're going for the towers, Again, the notes I highly recommend, that I think are must-have, are weak point attacks, Revenant, Shinnok teaching, and Black Dragon training. Everything, I mean, you can argue that Brutal Ending might be insanely useful for Tower as well, but it only makes sense if you have a diamond character with a full brutality set. If you do, which I don't. So it's this completely useless for me. But if you do have that, maybe having this note would, wouldn't be the worst thing. And also, death mark technique is extremely useful in certain situations. So you have to make a choice. I think you still need Revenant and Bone Shield. That's like, support tree is a must. But you might want to make a choice and not go for weak point attacks. And instead... 
go for death mark or brutal ending again depends on your characters if you have a lot of power drainers in your team like if you're using combat cop johnny cage i think you should go for weak point attacks but if not or if you're stuck on the battle that death mark technique or brutal ending might be able to help maybe just reset it once for that battle yeah that's what you should do thank you for watching let me know in the comments your perfect talent reset up and i'll see you in the next video Click subscribe button and goodbye.